Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. So today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to go over a video that I ran across, which is Stan Lee, and he's talking about how to create a good comic. And I want to compare and contrast this not only with some of the statements that have come out of Marvel today about how they produce content, but also, and this may just be my confirmation bias here, but it seems to reflect a lot of the things that I have been saying on this channel for quite some time. A lot of things that I've been talking about as the traditional way to make a hero, the traditional way to write a story. So I'm going to give you the audio of some of what Stan has to say in this really short eight minute video, which I'll link in the description if you want to watch the entire thing. And to give you some background, this video is from 2013 when he was talking to creators in India. This is how he begins. I would really love to share some of the things I've learned over the years and, and share them with any artists and writers in India who might be wanting to create new superheroes and new superhero adventures. So that's a little introduction just to show you that this is indeed what he is doing. He's talking about how to create good superhero and good superhero adventures. And just from the get-go, I want to point out the fact that what he is doing is he is laying down his experience on how he has determined is the best way to write a story from what he himself has done in the past. And if you listen to some of my recent videos, you know that this is directly contrary to the way that Marvel right now wants to write stories and who Marvel wants as an author of these stories. They want people who don't want experience within the industry. They want people who don't have experience writing these stories for an audience. That's specifically what they are looking for. And yet, here we have Stan, and he is saying, well, I'll give you my experience. Maybe this will help you write a story. So again, right off, directly contrary to what Marvel is doing right now. So, he goes on to say, y You see, for me, superheroes will always spark the imagination of people around the world, regardless of their background, because I think that people are always looking for something that represents the ideal person or the ideal situation. Okay, let me stop it there and go over what Stan has just said. He said, For me, superheroes will always speak to the imagination of people around the world, regardless of their background, because I think people are always looking for something that represents the ideal person or the ideal situation. Now again, this is directly contrary to what Sana Amanat, who is the director of content and character development at Marvel Comics, this is directly contrary to what she herself has stated as the way that she makes comics, the way that she made her character, Kamala Khan, and further, being the director of content and character development, this is the way we can not only assume, but see from her actions and who and how she has hired people, this is what she wants those authors to do as well. I'll give you some quotes from Sana Amanat from a video that I'll link in the description for her also, which is a short video where she talks about creating comics. But I won't play her for you. I know that annoys people to no end. So I'll give you the quotes from her. She says, We want to make sure there's a story for every single kind of fan. What I've been working on is stories for women, girls, and minorities. Now you see how this is directly contrary to what Stan was just saying. He says that he is sparking the imagination of people regardless of their background. Whereas Sana Amanat, what she plans to do and what she wants the others to do within Marvel is to focus on one specific kind of fan and have stories for women, for girls, for minorities. This is their background and therefore she focuses on that. And further, Stan was saying that he thinks these stories have appeal to everybody because they represent the ideal person or the ideal situation. But San Amanat, she said, you shouldn't compare yourself with anyone else because you will never appreciate who you are. You will be comparing yourself with an unobtainable standard. And she goes on and on about this in different interviews, talking about how you need to focus on your own identity and how this identity and the exploration of this identity for the characters is how you should write the story. This is the center of the story, and that's no wonder because she's a product of identity politics. But here you have Stan, and he is talking about stories appealing to people because they represent the ideal person, the ideal situation.
Which, if we go back to the traditional idea of hero, this is exactly what is supposed to happen when you have a traditional hero. This hero is trying to obtain this ideal standard. He is trying to be the ideal person. And being human, he will always fail to some extent, but he will never stop trying to reach this ideal. So let's go back to Stan. He moves on to talking about comics as fairy tales. You know... Almost all of us have loved fairy tales when we were young. Just remember, stories of giants and witches and wizards and monsters and things that were so colorful and, and bigger than life. But then you get a little older and you're too old to read fairy tales. But you never outgrow your love of that type of story. And if you think about it, Superhero stories today are really like fairy tales for grown-ups. The characters are bigger than life, just like in fairy tales. They have the same type of superpowers. Some can fly, some are extra strong, some can be invisible. It gives the viewer and the reader a chance to relive the excitement he or she had when they were young, they're really reading fairy tales for grown-ups when they read or when they see superhero stories today. And that's why I love them so. Now, there's a few things here that I want to go over. What does Stan say? He says, and if you think about it, superhero stories today are really like fairy tales for grown-ups. And he says this twice. They are fairy tales for grown-ups. He also says in a later part of this video, this is why... He loves them so much because they are fairy tales for grown-ups. And he continues and says, The characters are bigger than life. It gives the reader the chance to relive the excitement he or she had when they were young. Now let's compare that with the traditional way of making a story. Because as I go on about in a number of my videos, the traditional, almost Aristotelian way of making a story is that it is a representation, a representation of reality. And it harkens back to a childlike kind of wonder for learning. And this is exactly what Stan is talking about here. You're reading fairy tales for grown-ups. You know that you're not a kid anymore, but you want to see this and you want to experience this again. And as I said, this is exactly what Aristotle himself, when he's laying down the basis of a good story, this is what he says. This harkens back to your childhood. So Stan, whether he knows it or not, is talking about a very traditional kind of story. But let's compare this with the way son Amanat sees a story. Now this is a quote from that same interview that I just talked about with her. She says something similar. She talks about comics as mythology instead of fairy tales. And she says the following. The gods and goddesses of American pop culture are superheroes, and because these characters are so ingrained in our cultural psychology, we have to make sure that these characters are obviously pushing really positive ideas. And she further goes on to say that we want to make sure that we are constantly challenging our audiences. So you see a similar kind of idea because Stan is comparing comics to fairy tales. Sana Amanat is comparing comics to mythology. But Stan is saying that this is for grown-ups. And he says that a number of times. But Sana Amanat and Marvel are constantly saying that these are for children. Even in this interview that I'm quoting her from, this is what she's talking about. She's talking about the new audience for Marvel, the young audience for Marvel. And these are the people she wants to push these really positive ideas upon. So we see that contrast, whereas Stan was writing for grown-ups, you have these people within Marvel right now, they're writing primarily for children. And again, Stan says that these characters are bigger than life, which goes back to that idea of ideal that he has just talked about a few minutes ago. But I think the big thing here is that Stan says it gives the reader the chance to relive the excitement of when he or she was young. And again, that harkens back to the traditional way to make a story. But what does Sun Amanon see this story as being? As something exciting? No, she sees it as a learning tool. Something they can use to push ideas, again, into the minds of the young. It's not a piece of entertainment like Stan is talking about. It's a way to teach people ideas. So Stan continues on and he talks about the humanity of characters. And he says the following. To me, the human aspect of superheroes has always been perhaps the most important part. By that I mean, 
Okay, we assume your superhero might be extra strong or might be able to fly or run as fast as a comet. But unless you care about the superhero's personal life, you're just reading a shallow story. Just because a person has a superpower doesn't mean he might not have the same personal problems that you or I might have. Maybe he doesn't have enough money. Maybe he has a family problem. Maybe the girl he loves doesn't love him. Or maybe the girl he loves doesn't want to be involved with a superhero. There are so many things you can think of that round out the character and the personality so the superhero isn't just one or two-dimensional. You want a three-dimensional superhero who lives and breathes and worries and experiences things just the way you and I do, except for the fact that he or she has a superpower. So I know that I'm just quoting Stan and exactly what he says as you heard it, but I want to go over that again. It's very important. He says, To me, the human aspect of superheroes has always been perhaps the most important part. Unless you care about the superhero's personal life, you are just reading a shallow story. There are so many things you can think of that round out the character and the personality so that the superhero isn't just one or two dimensional. You want a three dimensional superhero who lives and breathes and worries and experiences things just the way you and I do, except for the fact that he or she has superpowers. Now let's compare that again with what Sana Amanat has said. She's talking about making a specific kind of story for a specific kind of fan, for women, for girls, for minorities. This is what the story is supposed to do. It is supposed to be for them specifically and their identity. It centers around their identity markers. Because they are a minority, then they can understand the story. Because they are girls, they can understand the story. Because they are women, they can understand the story. It's not about the entire person. It's not about the humanity of all of those characteristics put together in a whole person, like Stan is talking about. It is about the specific identity markers for her. And many of us know that when we read these stories, these are one or two dimensional characters. This is all they focus on, this specific aspect of this character's identity. And everything, including the universe itself, warps and twists around these identity markers of this one or two dimensional character, and that's the entire story. But what does Stan say that kind of story is here? He calls it a shallow story. He would write a story and characters that experience things just the way you and I do. That is to say, a full human being a full character, a well-rounded character that simply has superpowers. And he goes on to expand upon that point as follows. One thing I might mention, most writers, and I think it's an unfortunate thing, they try to write something that they think a certain audience might enjoy. I've never been able to do that because I can't put myself in the mind of other people. I only know what I enjoy, so every time I've written a story, I've always tried to write the sort of story that I myself would enjoy reading, a story that would interest me while I'm writing it, as I'm waiting to find out what happens next. And I can't know what other people think, but I can know what I think and I feel I'm not that unusual. If there's a type of story I like, there must be lots of people who like the same type of stories. Therefore, I have always written to please myself, not to please a certain type of audience, because you can't know the audience as well as you know yourself. And if I write a story that I'm enjoying while I'm writing it, and I can't wait to see what happens next, then I'm hoping that a large proportion of the public will feel the same way and they'll enjoy it too. So to sum it up, I have always tried to please myself, not other people, and somehow it seems to have worked because I guess I'm not that different than other people. Okay, Stan has just said a massive amount of important things. So I'll try to go over them one by one. He says, 
Most writers, and I think it's an unfortunate thing, they try to write something that they think a certain audience might enjoy. Now this is exactly what Marvel is all about right now. When they say comics are for everyone, they don't mean that every comic is for every person. Quite the opposite. They are saying, as San Amanat has said, we want to make sure there's a story for every single kind of fan. So they're saying that they're writing specific kinds of stories. They will have one kind of story for every one kind of person. Again, they're not saying that every comic should be for every person. They're saying that we have at least one story for every kind of person. San Amanat said they're writing a story for every single kind of fan. And they're writing stories, she's writing stories for women, for girls, for minorities. So obviously, who is she writing for? She is writing for a very specific targeted subsection of people. This is exactly what Stan calls an unfortunate thing. People who try to write for a certain audience. And he goes on to say, every time I've written a story, I've always tried to write the sort of story that I myself would enjoy reading. I feel that I'm not all that unusual. If there's a type of story I like, there must be a lot of people who like the same stories. Therefore, I've always written to please myself, not to please a certain type of audience. And if I write a story that I'm enjoying while I'm writing it, and I can't wait to see what happens next, then I'm hoping that a large portion of the public will feel the same way and they'll enjoy it too. Now let's look at a very specific phrase that Stan uses here and in another part of this video. He says, I'm not all that unusual. And so he's writing a story based upon the fact that he's not all that unusual, that people are like him, and so other people are going to enjoy, hopefully, the stories that he likes. Now let's compare that with a direct quote from Sana Amanat when she's talking about why Kamala Khan is so important. She said that Miss Marvel spun out of this idea from her childhood when she says, quote, I was very aware of my identity, and that I was so different from everyone else around me. I was not the norm. And so this character is, and I quote, for people who felt that they weren't represented. So again, we see the exact contrary of what Stan is talking about in making a good story, that you base it upon the idea that I'm not that unusual, and I think that other people out there in the public will connect with this as well. Whereas you have San Amanat and her direction of content and characters at Marvel right now saying, yes, I was very different from everyone around me, and that's what I need to concentrate on in order to make this character, and that's what I want to focus on when I'm writing for these specific kinds of individuals. Not for myself, but for these very specific kinds of individuals. And you'll also note that Stan uses these kinds of phrases. He says that he's hoping a lot of people will like these stories. And he's hoping that a large portion of the population will feel the same way as he does. This, again, is the exact opposite of what Sana Amanat is laying down. She is implementing and pushing these so-called positive ideas about identity politics. That everything needs to be centered around identity. And of course, within identity politics, you are subdividing everyone into their identity markers. You're making sure that they're all in their own little cliques, that they're all in their own little subsection, that they are cut off from everyone else. And this is who they are trying to appeal to. This is who they are trying to write for. This is what they are trying to tap in within themselves in order to write these stories. But this is exactly the opposite of what Stan is talking about. He says that he's not that unusual. He's like everybody else. And he wants a lot of people to see these stories and hopefully a large portion of the public will feel the same way that he does. So he's automatically assuming, as he stated earlier, that everyone should be able to interact with these stories. And that's the beauty of these stories because you have these stories written for everyone, for normal people, as opposed to San Amanat saying, I'm not the norm, I felt so alone and unusual. And you also have the fact that whereas this current Marvel, they're writing as they see it, one comic for every type of person. No, Stan is writing his comics for the general public, for everyone. He indeed wants his stories to be for everyone. In the actual sense of the phrase, comics are for everyone. He wants every comic to be for everyone, or potentially, at the very least, for everyone, instead of these subsections of the population that Marvel and their lifestyle branding right now is trying to appeal to. So, moving on, Stan keeps the best for last, and he talks about the way that a story should be written in its entirety by saying the following. 
So to wrap it up, what I suggest is use your imagination. Don't be afraid to come up with the wildest thought in the world if what you create is truly different and colorful and if it's written well, people will enjoy it. Now, when I say written well, what I mean is you might have the most fantastic notion in the world. Suddenly you have a man who can fly faster than the speed of light. That could be interesting, but you have to make him believable. You have to give the reader or the audience some reason to think he really has the ability to do that. How did he get that power? Origins of superpowers are always very interesting. If you get the right origin, like, like for example, Spider-Man being bitten by a radioactive spider, at least then the viewer has something to hold on to and to say, well, it might have happened, now I'll enjoy it. So even though you're writing what is, amounts to a fairy tale for grown-ups, try to keep enough facts and try to give enough detail that the reader or the audience will say, well, it could have happened, and then the, your public goes along with the fun. But if you make it too wild and you don't give any reason why it is as wild as it is, then sometimes it can be overkill. So what I'm trying to say is, let your imagination flow freely, but always base what happens on some sort of provable fact so that the reader or the viewer will go along with it and enjoy it as much as you enjoyed writing it. Okay, so to go over some key points that Stan has just laid down. He says, if what you create is truly different and colorful, and if it's written well, people will enjoy it. Now, when I say written well, what I mean is you might have the most fantastical notion in the world, but you have to make it believable. You have to give the audience or the reader some reason to think that he really has the ability to do that. And by the way, he repeats this twice when he talks about reason. He wants the audience to have a reason why this is happening. But he goes on to say, even though you're writing what amounts to a fairy tale for grown-ups, try to keep enough facts and try to keep enough detail that the reader or the audience will say, well, it could have happened, and then the public goes along with the fun. And again, he uses this phrase with facts. He says that twice in this little section. And once again, whether Stan knows it or not, he's talking about the traditional way to make a story, especially the traditional way to make a hero story. Because, as I'm always going on about, what is a story traditionally? How do you create a story? A story is a representation of reality. And how do you write a hero story? A traditional hero story, a traditional hero, is a paragon of virtue. And those virtues are a very specific number in a very specific order, but they are preceded by an idea called right reason. Whereas for your story, you take your idea, your representation of reality that you are laying down, and you make it reasonable in accord with reality. And that is the basis of even thinking about the ideas of how to be a hero and how to be virtuous and how to be a paragon of virtue. And this is exactly what Stan is talking about here. He talks about your story having reasons for things happening and that you have to give enough facts so that your reader will be able to interact with this story. This is reason in accord with reality. You have reason and you have the facts, which is reality. Stan, in his own way, is talking about right reason as the basis for a superhero story. And again, briefly, let's contrast that with the ideas that you see expressed in modern comics. These comics that Sana Aminat is talking about and that she is directing everyone at Marvel to write. These are stories that warp around the identity, the one or two dimensional identity of this specific hero. The universe itself needs to warp around these characters in order to validate them. They violate continuity, not only within the story themselves, not only within the characters themselves, but within the universe and the universal rules themselves. There is no standard of reason in these stories, and there isn't enough facts for you to lay down and say, yeah, this could have happened. This is a representation of reality. In these new stories, there is nothing of right reason. 
And once again, how does Stan finish off his thoughts? He talks about these stories and the public being able to interact with these stories so that they can go along with the fun. And he says in another place, so that they can enjoy them. So in Stan's mind, what these stories are for are for entertainment. They are for enjoyment and for fun. And they are for adults. And this is what he is trying to bring about for these adults. To make these stories a fun, enjoyable time for adults. To hearken back to that childlike wonder of fairy tales. As opposed to, as I had just quoted above, San Amanad saying that characters should be, and I quote, obviously pushing really positive ideas. What a massive disconnect between the Marvel of today and the Marvel of Stanley. So I'm going to leave it there, but if you want to see more of this massive disconnect, go and watch those two short videos that I have linked in the description. One being Stan that you just heard most of right now from me, the other being the Sana Amanat interview where she talks about creating her own story and how she directs the creation of other stories at Marvel, which again is only about eight minutes. I'll also link a very old video that I did about that interview with San Amanat at the end of this video. And you can watch that if you want to, to get the gist of this interview with her and hear most of it instead of going and watching it itself. But I'll have to apologize right up front for the quality of my video because it's a very old one. And usually before I go, my last words are about liking, commenting, and subscribing on my video. But today, I'm not going to have the last word. I'm going to give the last word to Stan. So good luck to you, thanks for listening, and I really enjoy talking to you. Excelsior!